first challenge. Yeah. Yeah, it does look like kind of a challenging case. So this is the the tracking system. What all does this include in the kit? Um, PC, ham radio, GPS. And all that's for the, the APRS system, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> At least you don't have to worry about the case coming open accidentally. So you got the power inverter for the car, you got a remote, looks like maybe an antenna mount. Yeah. And uh, what's the uh, the Kenwood device there in the front? Ham radio. Oh, okay, that's the ham radio. Okay. Yeah. Laptop, power supply, and all that. I think this might be the flaky power inverter, but if, if it is, we'll, we'll get the right one. Okay. This is magnetic. Oh yeah. Kind of. I heard the thud. When it's, you very it. it's very magnetic. <laughs> <laughs> Is the, the whip in the case? I didn't see it. Oh, okay. Kind of hidden on the side. Do you mind if I open the other door so I can go ahead and shoot for? So with that, that ham radio, I suppose that you have to have a uh, somebody who's at least a technician level to operate it, or is that yeah. how it works? Okay. I'm a technician. Okay. Yeah, I have that. Okay. One thing that Ken has also mentioned is that there's like a network of ham radio operators that forward the APRS packets onto the internet so you can track that way. Yeah, if you go to APRS.fee, uh -huh. um, it's a, a really great interface and you just put in the, the call sign. Okay. Um, I don't know how, um, APRS all works on the same frequency. Okay. But it parses out the call sign, which is part of the packet. Okay. And that's how it, you know, differentiates, you know, that particular object. Okay. There's a great book. It's out of print, but you can buy them on Amazon for a buck on APRS. Okay. Um, I apologize for not bringing mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it, fine. It's really a cool. I mean, it, it's really a great, a great reference. This is a um, GPS that plugs into the. Um, it's a laptop to show us where we're at in relation to the map that this thing moves around. So does the software automatically associate the APRS packet information with the GPS location for you? Is that what? It does. It kind of looks. It's interesting. It kind of looks like Google Maps. Okay. And um, and it, but it superimposes our information on it where we're at and along with the balloon that you know we're tracking. Okay. Is that custom software or is that like? No. Uh, it's not. No, but it's, um, the interface is really kind of hokey with you guys. Okay. You have plenty of time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. We're here to learn. So. 
the uh, IIT group. Have you met them? No, I haven't yet. Now, when you say that that inverter is flaky, it, does it just not put up out enough power? It checks in and out. It, it, oh, okay. But we have a spare. Yeah. So the same inverter you have in your car, I think. Oh yeah. Maybe. I actually threw mine in my backpack in case. Yeah. Okay. Disclosure. Basically, this is the. the the, the mobile unit is detachable. Okay. You know, so this really like the, the front end of it. Oh, okay. And kind of just run this wire down through there, get it a little out of the way. So is that a, just a normal Kenwood remote that you're using? Um, they take a long time. The ham radio is it is rather specific in that it has. Um, <laughs> It has a terminal controller, which okay. um, you, you need for APRS. That's just a serial connection, right? Yeah. Okay. But basically, what you know, the APRS data rides on the ham on the ham and uses ham as, as a carrier. Okay. And um, not um, not all ham radios are equipped to do this. Okay. And um, I don't think Kenwood makes a handheld anymore. I think you have to get a, 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 a issue. Is that how it's pronounced? Oh yeah. But this, you know, these work fine. Okay. Now, is this the exact same rig that uh, the the other car uh, yes. will have? Okay. That seems to be working. Cool. That's good. Even though we don't plan on talking. Okay. Quite long. If you have a radio, you have to have a microphone. Okay. Do you know what the logic is behind that? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's good to know for uh, folks out in Albuquerque that will be building us. I think they're going to use for the first edition. They're going to use a um, like a simpler beacon setup, but this is eventually where they would like to head. I think. Well, this is this is interesting. If you look at um, University of Michigan has the uh, Aurora Satellite Explorer, their CubeSat. Uh huh. And this is the same rig you need to monitor um, the CubeSat. Okay. All right. So you can do high altitude launch, balloon launch, and uh, CubeSat with it. That's cool. Yes. The tanks are coming this way, sir. We're going to go in the jet car. Hey! Yeah. Yeah. That was really funny. What a good trip, sir. You of all people have gone to bed. This is frightfully way efficient. This is incredible. Nine minutes. All right. Thank you. So we're gonna have time to sit down and kind of um, explain. Now the uh, I don't know that much about ham radio. The antenna is actually usually sized to whatever wavelength you're on, right? Yes. Okay. And since APRS always uses the same frequency, the antenna is always the same, and you have don't have to do anything different with it. Correct. Okay. Yeah, APRS uses a standard frequency. Uh, okay. For all objects, and, and then it's basically it's the, the call sign that's embedded in the in the messaging that differentiates that object from others that are on that same frequency. Okay. So let's say there's two like you. Let's, for some reason, you launched a high altitude balloon, and another group did within range of, of yours. How do you tell your APRS packets apart? The APRS packet has the, the call sign. Oh, okay. Like if you like the um, the big red bees or any anything that like there's another object called like the Trequino. Yeah. That you would have to embed your call sign in into the. Um, 
like with the track window, you put it in the code. I, I don't know how you saw oh, the big yeah. red B, but like if you look at the big red B, which the big, big red B is basically a GPS with a, with a radio just transmit APRS. Yeah. It's made for rockets. Okay. But it, it's very popular with balloons as well. Okay. Um, you know, they they won't sell you one like the order form had. You have to put your call sign. Oh, really? So okay. your call sign becomes part of, you know, part of the order. Okay. And we actually launched two trackers with two call signs. We have a, we have a oh, really? backup. Okay. So All right. You can you can follow either or. Okay. Does that channel ever get crowded, or is it not used heavily enough to um, be a problem? It's interesting that. Like especially in a metropolitan area, people just have these things in their cars, and if you just go to, you know, aprs.fi, uh -huh. you know, and it just goes to Chicago. It's amazing how many things are, are moving around and it's tracking, and it's huh. they have the bandwidth to handle it all. Huh. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. So on the laptop, you're probably just running Microsoft Windows and. Yes. Okay. And it, what I just plugged in here is like the front panel. Oh, okay. The this, control. This is a mobility. Uh, it goes under the seat or stashes away. Just a Dell Latitude 610. Windows XP on it. I think we need to know that sooner than later. Hey. There you go. 